Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. We're here on the third Sunday of Lent, the season when the church calls us to remember our baptisms and to reflect on the ways that we have failed to keep our baptismal promises. Furthermore, the church is pulling us to the font at the great vigil of Easter or at Easter or the next time we can gather with water. And we hear from the Hebrew scriptures in Exodus the people who are frustrated with Moses, who have no water. And God tells Moses to strike a rock, and there's water available. Then we have in John's gospel so many things going on. Jesus has come. His disciples leave him at a well while they go get food. They're there at the heat of the day, and there's a Samaritan woman. That they're there at the heat of the day tells us a lot. This Samaritan woman is an outcast from her village. If you've lived somewhere that it gets very hot in the heat of the day, uh, you don't want to be doing that work, carrying water, cutting grass, in the heat of the day. This is normally a morning or evening activity. Furthermore, this was usually a time for women of villages to socialize together, to share childcare, have all the kids running around, and to get time to just talk, to not worry about feeding or cooking or cleaning or husbands, but to be women together. This woman is here by herself when no one else is. That's when Jesus encounters her and asks her for water. Now, she's a little bit startled because Jews and Samaritans don't get along. They don't worship together. They think that worship should happen in different places, and that's caused a rift between them over time. Nonetheless, Jesus asks for something to drink. Jesus then gets punny, as often happens in the scriptures. Jesus says that, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying it to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water here in Hebrew as it's used is often a synonym for spring water. But Jesus means much more than that. Jesus means water that gushes up to eternal life. The church means water that flows from God, that God blesses, and through which we come in our baptisms to eternal life. Eternal life is something that we can really be thinking about right now. I don't know about you, but uh, there's a lot going on, a lot happening outside of my condo, outside of our church, with things changing rapidly, every day. And what's keeping me grounded, and I hope is helping you to stay grounded, is the living water, the gift of God's grace that we experience in baptism. Martin Luther famously struggled with depression and anxiety and reminded himself over and over, Martin, remember that you are baptized. Often in English we hear, remember your baptisms and be thankful. This stems from Luther's writings. But really his assurance was to remember that he was baptized, that he was God's, and God had claimed him. As we have this great anxiety swirling around us, we are staying home. We're gathered here digitally, as more than two or three, and we're spending time praying and hearing from God's word. I hope you're staying home and taking care of yourselves, whether you have symptoms of COVID-19 or not. We have to be like the woman at the well, separated from other people. And in this text, while we have 
all that's, that's going on, where the disciples come back, shocked that Jesus is talking not to a Samaritan, but to a woman, the woman goes and tells the people around her that Jesus knows everything she's done. They believe her. They believe this outcast woman, and she brings them back. They ask Jesus to stay for two days, and he does. This is not the only time in John's Gospel that a woman is used to tell the good news of Jesus. This is not the only time in Christian story that someone who's not worthy or not the right person is used to tell the good news. In this text, God is using someone who is outcast in so many ways to bring people to Jesus. As we move toward the font, whenever we'll get there, the church is asking us to do the same thing. In our baptisms, we've proclaimed, or promised to proclaim, by word and example, the good news of God in Christ. This text teaches us that God can and does and wants to use all of us if we let God. Right now, as we're surrounded by anxiety, surrounded by what the prayer book refers to as the changes and occupations of this world, we have one another, and we have eternal life. And God can be using us to proclaim that by doing just what we're doing, keeping each other safe, showing the ultimate love of our neighbor, trying to keep people alive. I don't know when we'll be worshiping in person together again. It's canceled at least through next week, but I suspect it will be extended. As I said before the broadcast, I will be available on Google Meets every morning at 8.30 and every evening at 5.30 so that we might pray the daily office together. This gift of our church for daily prayer corporately together in person, or corporately digitally gathered, or corporately as we say it on our own, but joined in the communion of saints, saying the same prayers, lets us know that we are not alone and helps us to fight social isolation in the midst of necessary social isolation. As we pray, remember that we have been given the living water that gushes up to eternal life. And as we're nervous and anxious, let's let not our hearts be troubled. As we work to take care of the things we can control, remember the things we can't, and trust God to work it all out. Please email me your concerns or needs so that I can be in touch or do what is necessary to have needs met. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. We've been given this water. Let's remember that our thirsts are quenched. Amen.